Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brian Jack with Simple Man's Comics and in this video we're gonna give you top 10 comics based on cartoons. Now if you noticed also recently we just released another top 10 that was based on toy franchises, wasn't it Jack? That's right Brian because we've been talking about trends lately on the channel whether it's our mainstay top 10, the Bolo buy list, that back issue top 10, uh, or three up, three down. We are constantly talking about trends that are moving in the comic book market. And one of those that we have noticed is that nostalgia factor that's coming back in from the 80s and 90s, whether it's toy franchises, whether it's cartoons, uh, whether it's other things from pop culture, music, movies, professional wrestling, these things are affecting the media and the buying habits of people today. Yeah, I've said a lot of times on this channel how nostalgia drives me and my personal comic book collection. So I'm sure a lot of these titles that you're about to hear will do the same for you. So do us a favor, click that thumbs up button. And if you want to see these videos when they drop on our channel, make sure you subscribe and click that notification bell as well. But we're going to get into it right now, starting with number 10. And then coming at number 10, I'm a big Disney fan. And this was a cartoon that I used to watch after school, even in high school. But the first one we're talking about at that 10 spot is Darkwing Duck number one. Yeah, of course, spinning out of the classic DuckTales. You know, this mm -hmm. is a, <laughs> you can't say DuckTales without doing the woo-woo. But yeah, this is an absolute Disney, um, kind of a deep dive, right? This is not really a mainstay character. You're not talking about um, the most prolific character or cartoon on this list. Matter of fact, there are bigger first appearances and really bigger overall properties on the honorable mentions portion of this video. So why is it on the list? Because this is one book that really connected with the comic book audience and mostly the comic book collecting audience, specifically those who chase rare variants. There are several variants throughout this series, specifically ones that homage classic key Batman issues. Returns. Yes, Dark Knight Returns, several others. Uh, there's a um, Killing Joke one and these books have been chased they are tough to find um this is not a series that was highly printed you're talking again about all ages series from several years ago and whenever these books kind of pop up on the market they always grab the secondary market by storm and the great thing is that you watch darkwing duck right now on disney plus then the next comic based on cartoon that we're going to talk about coming at that nine spot is that He-Man Master of the Universe number one. This is that Marvel star from 1986, right? Yeah, you know, we talked about this uh, when we were discussing this series previously on the uh, top 10 back issue list that, you know, really while the DC comic series, it, it precedes this one, this is really the antithesis of a um, Masters of the Universe series. It's the iconic one. Everybody remembers those late issues. This is the series that is Chase. This is the one that you yourself put together with that great 9-8 set. Um, and, you know, I really think Masters Universe, we've talked about this, we're bullish on this property. Aside from being fans of the property, albeit you're a bit of a super fan, you know, this is also a property where there's just so much positive going on. But you'll notice the placement on the list, Brian. You know, it's at the top of the list as a top cartoon, as a toy franchise on our video that you mentioned in the intro, the, the top 10 comics based on toy franchises, that book was front and center because it really had more of an impact, again, coming from toys. The cartoon and the comics were really just vehicles to sell the toys. Right, and it makes sense. Cartoon sells the toy. The toy is what people remember, and that's why people with the toy list, it was a little bit higher ranked than where we have it on the cartoon. Right. Then hitting our list at number eight. This is another great Disney cartoon. We talked about Darkwing Duck at number 10, but at number eight, everyone remembers Disney's Gargoyles. But do they remember there's a comic book series based on that cartoon? Yeah, and this book has seen ebbs and flows in the secondary market. It's always kind of been sought after, maybe not to the degree of some of the other kind of uh, classic cartoon books that we're going to talk about on this list. But it's seen certain spikes. The first spike was when the Disney Plus app first debuted. Gargoyles was one of the surprise hits of the DC Plus app. A lot of people who had never really paid attention to the series checked it out for the first time. But that's not why it's on the list right now, Brian. Yeah, we're showing tribute. We're paying homage to that original cartoon series. But 
the reason why this one is placed on this list right now and why it's really relevant is the news that the Jordan Peele live action film could be on the way. And there is a great article right now talking about that news and that rumor on SimplemansComics.com. The next on the list, everyone remembers that classic 90s X-Men series, but here we have a comic book also with X-Men Adventures number one. Yeah, we previously talked about this book on the top 10 affordable X-Men keys to be on the lookout for list, where we tried to highlight some books that people weren't paying attention to. And this book really came to our attention as we've watched the success of the Batman Adventure series. And this X-Men Adventure series really has just been overlooked. And we talked about this with Gargoyles. The other big winner of the initial launch of Disney Plus was that X, original X-Men animated series. Uh, everybody was kind of reliving their childhood. The theme song was everywhere. And it was kind of like one of the most commonly talked about things. And I think it's really the, the main reason behind why we keep talking about this 90s nostalgia when it comes to the X-Men and how it's going to really be strong and prevalent kind of going forward. But you know, if you're looking for more X-Men information, if you want the kind of exclusive scoop on what could be going on in the future of the MCU as it pertains to the X-Men, be sure to check our Mikey Sutton exclusive leak video that we've got up on the channel where we're talking about the potential X-Men team hitting the MCU as well as some possible storylines that could be starting up. Also, Jack just talked about that theme song for that classic animated series, especially with the popularity on Disney+. Plus. Comment down below if you now or have ever had that theme song as the ringtone on your phone, because I'm curious to know. I have. Then hit us at that mid spot on the list at number six. We get that My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. We all know we've heard Jack talk on this channel before how he's kind of the mastermind behind some of these My Little Pony variants, and for good reason. But we're talking about the cartoon, and we're talking about the comic based on it. Yeah, it's been a long time since we've talked My Little Pony here on the Simple Men's Comics YouTube channel. But one of the core values that I appreciate and that we've adopted on the channel is really respecting other people's fandoms. It's not our place to sit there and judge what other people geek out on. And here's the thing. My Little Pony specifically, the cartoon reboot Friendship is Magic, kind of took the world by storm. Who doesn't know the term brony? Who doesn't know some adult who was sitting there watching those My Little Pony episodes? So coming out of that, we got this IDW comic series, tons of variants, tons of spinoff miniseries, and it was a smashing success, especially those early issues. Retailers were really making a fortune off of this series. And it really, you know, it's it's one of those books that you'll see a lot of people try to make lists like this. You will not see people keep it real enough to include My Little Pony firmly on the list. But I don't think you can talk about 10 cartoon comic properties that have had a bigger impact on the hobby as a whole than My Little Pony. Yeah, I mean, there's stores out there right now doing store exclusives for My Little Pony. Yep. So there's no doubt this is a franchise not only from a cartoon but a comic book that a lot of people love that's why it's on the list at number six coming at number five on the list we have that teenage mutant ninja turtle number one the archie series which we've talked about also on the back issue bolo show right yeah, that's right, because, you know, somebody may see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on this list, and their gut reaction is, come on, guys, this is an OG comic series. Everything that came after it, from the toys to the movies to the cartoon, was spawned from that original comic book series, and while you all right, we are talking about the Archie comic book series, which is firmly based on that original Ninja Turtles cartoon series that most of us grew up on. And again, you want to talk about iconic theme songs that's one right there that's about as iconic as it gets and a lot Shout of people sky to the sewer right right a lot of people didn't know until the the documentary series on netflix of toys that made us that the person who's singing that song is the person who would later go on to create so many television shows like two and a half men so you know it's funny where people get their start in the entertainment industry but this is a key issue we've talked about it before multiple programs because you're getting three first appearances. You got Bebop, you got Rocksteady, and you got Krang. Three first appearances in a 
title uh, of a property that it has really stood the test of time and generationally has been one that's been passed on from one generation who grew up with it in the 80s and 90s to the next generation who's growing up with it today. My kids are as excited and as into turtle mania as we were when we were kids. So this is a property to always be bullish on because I don't think the turtles are going anywhere. And then hitting us at that number four spot, we have Rick and Morty number one. Now, we kind of talked about the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic and how it's not addressing everyone, but there is a fandom for it, Rick and Morty. This is the one where I say, hey, this isn't my fandom, but I know there is a huge following. A lot of people love it. And a lot of people love this comic book series as well. Yeah, this series has never really been for me, but you know what? This is this is a book that I'm excited to talk about for a couple different reasons. Number one, it's a book that I think when people start thinking naturally about uh, cartoons and comics, your brain goes to the days when we were all sitting on the floor watching those Saturday morning cartoons. So your heavy nostalgia 80s and 90s, but it's important to talk about some of the cartoons of today. Adult Swim on Comedy Central has been a major purveyor of cartoons, especially cartoons aiming towards an adult audience. Audience. None have been more popular than this one right here, Rick and Marty, coming from Dan Harmon, who's also popular as the creator of the television show Community. And this issue is really the walking dead of cartoon comic book issues, because issue number one, as a back issue, it, it blew up the variants. We were talking four digits for a lot of these books at one point. Definitely prices have cooled. But I think you're really looking at an iconic property. Look how Rick and Morty have been used in national advertising campaigns, how companies like AEW Wrestling. Like McDonald's sauce. Right, McDonald's, AEW Wrestling have teamed up for promotions. You know, so you've seen their effect on pop culture, uh, their collaborations with a lot of clothing companies and so on and so forth. Their toys and merchandise are firmly placed in every big box retailer across the country. And for that reason, you know, this is really a, a no brainer end all be all cartoon that I think is going to be around for some time. And it, while it may not be for us, Brian, it really kind of almost reminds me of an attitude that our parents got when we were kids watching maybe like so Ren and Stimpy or Beavis and Butthead, you know, where they just didn't get it. And maybe we're the old funny duddies now who just don't get it. We are now into the top three. And just how we had talked about number four not being for me, I'm sure my age here, number three, we have that G.I. Joe. That cartoon, that's something that I watched as a kid, eating my Cinnamon Toast Crunch, eating my life cereal. But c cartoon alone, great G.I. Joe number one. We're talking about that Marvel series, right? Absolutely. And you know, G.I. Joe, definitely another property, more synonymous maybe with toys than the cartoons, but that cartoon series was an absolute phenomenon. Uh, Masters of the Universe definitely was probably a more prolific toy line within a short period of time. Within a longer period of time, G.I. Joe kind of reigned supreme. Um, and more importantly, we're, again, we're talking about that cartoon series. Who at this point doesn't know catchphrases like, yo, Joe, knowing well, is half, half the battle. The battle. Um, yeah, these are, these are phrases that have become kind of pop culture jokes and taglines. Uh, a lot of people from this era have grown up kind of looking at Sergeant Slaughter as a cartoon character and don't even realize his days fighting Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania. So, you know, this is obviously a property that I'm extremely passionate about, but this cartoon was so perfect for its time and day. It's available right now uh, for free on YouTube, a, a lot of episodes, maybe quite possibly the entire series. There's also a feature-length animated uh, film that came out uh, when, the, when the series was active. So this is a property we're going to be talking about a lot more as we get ready for some live action G.I. Joe rebooted movies. But man, I don't know if anything can beat the nostalgia of the cartoons where everybody's shooting, but nobody's dying. Yeah, it's like stormtroopers. <laughs> then coming in at number two, this is one a lot of people are well aware of, just like Jack said with G.I. Joe. This had an animated movie as well where that main person, well, maybe it's not a main person. But well, it's a person to me, damn it. <laughs> the character died. And we all probably shed a tear at our young age. But we are talking about Transformers number one. Of course, and that person he's talking about is none other than the great Optimus Prime. And 
yes, this is a cartoon series that I think was the cartoon series of this era uh, in both the, the regular series as well as the full length feature. I mean, it really kind of set the tone for what animated feature films within this genre could be. Of course, we've seen Disney animated features and they had kind of forever hit that kind of classic all ages family. But let's be honest, this was for the boys. This was had us young boys excited. This was the kind of action we like to see. It was fighting, it was shooting, it was space, it was robots, it was aliens, it was everything you could possibly want. Um, and Transformers is timeless and we talked about it. There is new animated stuff coming down the pike. There is new live action films coming down the pike. The comic is still up and running, albeit with a new publisher, IDW, and is has a numerous spin-off series and crossover series. So all these years later, we're still talking Transformers. It's another one where the theme song immediately sticks in your head upon even talking dun, about dun, Transformers. Dun, dun. But yeah, and I agree. And like you talk about the animated movie, they've been showing it in theaters recently through that Fathom yeah. events because that's how popular it is and how much it's got hold of people's nostalgia. But great, great, great Marvel stands on its own alone from the cartoon and it definitely deserves to be at the number two spot. And here we are, the number one spot coming in at number one on the top 10 comics based on cartoon series. We are talking about Batman animated series, but even more, we're talking about Batman Adventures number one. Yeah, this is a book, Brian, that we've been talking about more and more on the channel because, you know, Batman Adventures really was the cartoon of an era. We're just talking about Transformers, G.I. Joe, Masters of the Universe, these cartoons that you and I grew up watching and really, you know, if we were to sit there prospectively from a third party, I can admit that probably Transformers was the cartoon of that era. But when I look at my brother's generation, I've got three younger brothers. And when I look at my next younger brother's generation, man, the cartoon that had the largest effect on him was the Batman animated series. Now, I was a little older at that point, so I liked it, but it really wasn't my main cup of tea because I was a Jack Nicholson Joker guy at that point. But that Batman animated series has really stood the test of time. Something that's important because a lot of media doesn't hold up 20, 30 years later. The Batman animated series stuff is maybe better now than it ever was because when you see what has happened and what's going on so much in comics, man, that is some absolute classic storytelling. Uh, it, when you start looking at that series, you start to immediately think Harley Quinn. And that's what everybody pays attention to, that Batman Adventures 12 key book i can't take a single thing away from it this entire series is really something that we want to highlight with this pick but if there's a book that i think is undervalued it's got to be that number one issue the first appearance of batman adventures in comics if you will uh you know batman adventures is a a show like we said that has really captivated an audience and it continues to so much so that they're bringing the series back with the return of Batman Adventures from DC Comics. Be sure to head to frankiescomics.com if Batman Adventures is something that gets you excited and you want to check out some really cool retailer exclusive variants because he's got the hottest artist in the game, Peach Momoko, doing the hottest DC Comics character there is, Harley Quinn. Not just on the cover to issue number one, but stay tuned and be on the lookout for the cover to issue number two, also featuring Peach Momoko. So there you have it, guys. There is our top 10 list for comics based on cartoon franchises. We understand that there's a lot of comic books out there based on cartoon franchises that it's hard to make just a list of 10. So we always have them covered with some of that, don't we, Jack? Oh, absolutely. So stay tuned for the honorable mentions. They're going to be flashing across your screen. This is maybe the toughest to put together top 10 list because there are so many great comics from the era of the Saturday morning cartoon. So stay tuned and be on the lookout for those issues. <laughs> 